What's up Bobcats? In this lecture, we're gonna go over restrictive and obstructive lung disease. Uh, but before I get started, uh, make sure to hit that like button, and also subscribe. So the big difference between obstructive and restrictive lung disease is with obstructive, there's difficulty getting air out. So air out of the lungs. For restrictive, there's difficulty getting air into the lungs. And two of the main examples that we looked at in lab, so one of them, we looked at emphysema, and another one that we looked at was tuberculosis. So something that uh, causes emphysema is smoking. What causes tuberculosis is uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, so a specific uh, type of bacteria. And some of the findings for emphysema, emphysema whenever you uh, look at it under, like, under a microscope, so what we identified in lab, so we saw that with emphysema, there was lots of open spaces between all of these different alveoli. So there were, because there were a reduced amount of the alveoli, we saw lots of open spaces. For tuberculosis, we saw a bunch of these, what's known as granulomas. So these granulomas, it's these, this scarred tissue and these, these nodules that are found that are found within the lung tissue and it's the granulomas are primarily composed of so some of that bacteria you also have some macrophages in there as well as some CD4 T cells and so one of the key features here with the restrictive is we see those granulomas and then there's lots of there's lots of scar tissue so with all of the scar tissue, we're gonna see there's more of this collagen. There's increased amount of this collagen. Okay, so once we move on to obstructive uh, lung disease, so I mentioned that there's reduced alveoli, and one of the things that we looked at for uh, the, the pulmonary lobule model, we saw that there was lots of the elastic fibers there. But for emphysema, because there's reduced amount of alveoli, there's also going to be reduced amount of these elastic fibers. And so these elastic fibers, what they're responsible for is the recoil. So this leads me to the difference between compliance and a recoil. So when we talk about compliance, we're talking about the expansion of the lungs. So when you breathe air in during inhalation, the lungs are getting filled with air and compliance is the expansion. But the recoil is the collapse when you're breathing that air out during expiration. So recoil, we're gonna call this the collapse. So this is the collapse of the lung. Because these, these two different types of uh, variables, they're gonna be different in obstructive versus restrictive lung disease. So with obstructive, more specifically with emphysema, the result is that because there's, it's difficult to get air out, there is increased, increased compliance, but the recoil, so the collapse is gonna be decreased. For restrictive, there's gonna be decreased compliance because it's difficult to get the air in, but the recoil is gonna be increased. Okay, so why is it that you see a decrease in the recoil for emphysema? Once again, this is because we have a reduced amount of these elastic fibers, and then um, also during expiration, some of those bronchioles, the bronchioles, they're, they're constricted, they constrict. Okay, so the next thing to look at is spirometry. Uh, 
So in my previous lecture, I talked about spirometry and how this is a useful tool to distinguish between restrictive and obstructive. But what are some of the abnormalities seen for uh, obstructive and restrictive? So if we look at a spirometer, like what, what would show on the graph? So for obstructive, we would see that you'd have this normal tidal volume, but then the amount of air that they're able to inspire, so would be pretty normal, but then the amount of air that they're able to get out, so the expiratory volume, that is gonna be decreased because it's difficult to getting air out. So the ERV is gonna be reduced. And then because they also have difficulty getting air out, there's all of these um, open spaces, this air is gonna be trapped. And because the air is gonna be trapped within the lung, there's gonna be an increase in the residual volume. So the amount of air that stays in the lungs after expiration. So expiratory uh, reserve volume, it's gonna be reduced. Residual volume is gonna be increased. And as a result, because this number increases uh, significantly, there's gonna be an increase in the TLC. And I already mentioned there's also gonna be increase in, in the residual volume. Okay, so what about uh, tuberculosis for restrictive lung disease? What it's, what's it gonna be? Well, it's gonna be the opposite here. So for, t for the total lung capacity is gonna be reduced, and then also the residual volume is gonna be reduced. So what would that look like for a spirometer? So it would look like this. You'd have this tidal volume, but because they can't get air in, that e IRV is gonna be very small. So this would be IRV. So it's gonna be reduced. And then the ERV, so because if you can't in, get in a lot of the air, if you can't get in a lot of air, there's not gonna be a lot of air that you can blow out. So ERV is gonna be reduced. So ERV is reduced. Also, vital capacity is gonna be reduced. Or residual, um, residual volume is gonna be reduced. And so as a result, the total lung capacity is going to decrease. Okay, so that's looking at uh, both of these, what you would see on a spirometer. Another uh, thing to look at for spirometry is what's known as the force, the ratio of the force expiratory volume in one second divided by the force vital capacity uh, ratio. So FEV1 to the FVC ratio. So what is this? Well, so vital capacity, we've already talked about what vital capacity is. Vital capacity includes tidal volume, so it includes tidal volume, inspiratory uh, reserve volume, as well as expiratory reserve volume. But when we say force, what we're saying is that it's under timed conditions. So the amount of air that you can inhale and then exhale, so that's what's gonna be the force vital capacity under timed conditions. The force expiratory volume in one second, so this is gonna be FEC, and then FEV1 is just gonna be the amount of air within one second. And so distinguishing between these two, defining an obstructive uh, lung disease, if the number is less than 70%, we define it as an obstructive lung disease. So if a normal, if a normal ratio, let's say it was four, uh, four to five liters for how much air you can breathe in and out. So let's say this was at 80%. Well, for this ratio, it's gonna be less than 70%. So an example would be for instance, 2.5, let me do this in red. It would be 2.5 divided by five. And the lower that this number is, the more, uh, the more significant, the, more, the worse the condition is. Okay, so then what about when we look, talk about restrictive? So let me write this here. So FEV1 to the FEC 
FVC, we have a reduced in the ratio. For restrictive, the number is going to be greater than 70%. And so the reason that it's greater is because both of these numbers are going to be reduced because we can't get as much air in because we have all of this scar tissue. So both of these numbers, so FEV1 is decreased, but then FVC is significant, significantly decreased. So, so an example of a particular ratio, so for instance, let's say it was three over 2.4 uh, liters. So if this was the case here, this would be um, more than the typical 70%. And then you would also see these numbers are significantly um, reduced here. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this lecture.